uh, welcome to today's uh, IES, IEMS uh, lecture. Uh, my name is Albert Park. I'm the director of the Institute for Emerging Market Studies. Um, and uh, let me just say a few words about uh, Professor Freeman. Uh, Richard Freeman holds the Herbert Asherman Chair in Economics at Harvard. He is also the faculty co-director of the Labor and Work Life Program at the Harvard Law School and Senior Research Fellow in Labor Markets at the London School of Economics Center for Economic Performance. He directs the Sloan Science Engineering Workforce Projects at uh, the National Bureau of Economic Research, where he has spent uh, a lot of his time, and is co-director of the Harvard Center for Green Buildings and Cities. So you can see already that Richard uh, has, uh, is very active in a number of research areas and has made many important contributions to uh, labor economics. He's also been very engaged in what's been happening in China for many years. I know this because I always run into Richard at events in Beijing and sometimes in places where I would never expect to see him. Uh, and so I know he is deeply interested and has been going back to China very frequently working on a variety of data-related projects. Uh, I think we were talking about them earlier, including Alibaba data, including migrant survey data, and a new project on air filters in uh, Jinan in uh, Shandong province. So he's, he's extremely knowledgeable about China, but also uh, has a very broad perspective on issues related to uh, labor markets. Today he's not really focusing as much on labor, I guess, from the title. He's going to focus on uh, innovation uh, in China. So Richard, welcome to HKUST. Okay. okay, and feel free to interrupt and correct mistakes and so on, because this is work that we're hoping to, to turn into a paper by the fall, um, because the, my co-worker, Lin Tang Li, is entering a graduate school at Princeton, and he will basically disappear into a black hole for the first year of his graduate uh, studies, and, and that will slow us getting a, 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 a paper out of, out of this. And, and yeah. So, You've all, or maybe you have, all haven't, but you should have heard that China has had an extraordinary increase in patents. And that's the phenomenon we'll be talking about first. And I'll tell you the questions that we're posing to this, about the, or asking about this phenomenon. If you have some other ones, just pop, you know, yell. And, and, um, or if you have things you would like, you think a tabulation of patents might help you? Just ask, because we're, we're, we're very open to uh, uh, you know, sharing data and, and so on. We have these two data sets, and I'll talk a, a little bit of some of the details, but not, not enough, hopefully, that you get, because not everybody's going to know much and, or be into the depths of the data. So the CPO is the Chinese Patent Office data, and um, we've made some links to firms using some Google patent data. And uh, the USPTO is the American patent thing. And then I'll give you what, 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 what we uh, have. Whoops. So first, what is this patent explosion? And why do we, uh, why do we use a, 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 you know, such a sharp word? Well. You can see from 1990 through 2000, the green line at the bottom, that's China. And it doesn't really, China doesn't really have a patent system. I mean, it has one, but then nobody's using it. And all of a sudden, somewhere right, right around 2005, it explodes. It explodes to a level that like dwarfs every other country's patents by just extraordinary, uh, you know, amounts. You 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 see the Japanese patents are declining. But Japan is an aging society, and uh, patents are more young people than older people uh, 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 generated. The uh, the American patents are wiggling along. Uh, Korea's had a pretty big increase in patents, um, but. 
the, the China thing is truly astounding. Um, so that, so that, and I, I first was got realized this was going on, and I was asked to referee a paper for Science Magazine, maybe five six years ago on China's patents, and I said, "Oh my God!" Somebody from I think Singapore, and they had this data just went zooming up, and then the interesting question was, "Do you?" You accept the paper that basically has only one thing to it and has no serious analysis or anything else. But uh, I, I, I pushed it to be published because I thought it was the kind of fact that people should see. And then you start, other people would start uh, you know, study, studying it. I didn't realize I would be some, one of the people who, who would start studying it too. The reason we're focusing on it is, as, as Albert said, it's, comes more from the innovation side. Is China becoming an innovative society or not? And what kind of indicators or evidence would you look for China's? Um, we, we have done some work looking at the fraction of sales that, that are listed on the Chinese industrial uh, firm survey that, that where they ask a question, are your sales, how much sales come from new products or processes. We then divide that by total. That's been going up uh, in, in, in the data. But that's a sort of, I don't know, it's a very, um, it's just, you know, who knows who in companies is, is filling this out. We don't know what the products are. It, 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 it's not a comfortable statistic. It's not a bad one. But it's, so we decided to look at this, at these, this massive, Increase in patents. These here are, this says they're patent applications. So you'll go to the next one, it's showing it's about a three year lag. Those are uh, patent grants. And, and you, 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 you see, again, China's rising not as rapidly, but look at the, the line for 2000, whatever it is, 14 to 15, and imagine three years. That, that it, from the previous applications, it's just going to go. It's, it's skyrocketing. So if you took patents at face value as an in, indicator of inno, innovative activity, China has moved from being the least innovative to the most innovative. But obviously, that would, that's not a very good conclusion to reach. That's sort of impossible for anybody to do that. So a lot of our research will, uh, will focus on how real is this patent explosion and, and to what extent is this being um, bogus because the government has put into its five-year plan more patents. There is money around for, for, for people to, to do patents. And, uh, if you're a professor at university, you can take out, you can take a patent and you'll get extra money. And then you don't have, you don't, you may not renew it ever. So I've got a, a, a useless invention that I know is useless. Um, and, but it gets me some money from the university and, I, and I'll do that. And so we, we have to, to, to sort of uh, try to figure out what's real and what's not. Um, the patents has a long history of study. And if you, if you, I'm not familiar with this. There's a book first by Jacob Schmuckler, which was a Harvard University Press book. I read that as a graduate student. Um, and it, it's different than national income accounts. And you get a different perspective on the economy when you look at patents than when you look at national income accounts. National income accounts pushes you towards macroeconomics. Patents uh, pushes you towards Schumpeter. It's kind of a different sort of orientation. And then, um, he was one of my colleagues at, at, at Harvard, probably is the person who brought me there. Uh, um, Zvi Grilikis spent a large part of his career working on patents. And so you have this quote here. In this desert of data, patent statistics loom up as a mirage of wonderful pl plentitude and objectivity. They're related to inventiveness in the way that national income account figures are not. 
So we want to get in, 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 in innovation or things out of national income accounts. Um, you have no total factor productivity and there's a residual. And it, no, you attach that to whatever you, you're, you're, you want. Uh, um, now I just want to be careful. The patents are an indicator. And Schumpeter and later this Oslo Convention of, of Economic Statisticians define in innovation, there's a technical definition. Uh, it, it literally copies what Schumpeter said, so it's kind of interesting that, that he, he that the, you know, the the statisticians didn't think of anything more to, to add. And it is about: Do you produce a new product or a process? Uh, patent is produces nothing. 90 to 95 percent of patents are unconnected to any good. That's a, that's a, you just have an idea, you some technical thing, and nobody sees any money in 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 in, in making use of it. There's some patents that are useless. Um, Corning Glass made the patent on the um, hard glass for the cell phones. They made no money. It was useless because nobody had needed hard glass uh, uh, of, of the kind. And then lo and behold, the, it turned out that there was, was a, 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 pro, a product. And so we're going to use them as an indicator, but we, we have to be very careful with this explosion. Hard to believe that, that, that it reflects this. Oops, to the right. Yeah. The other part of, that motivates and kind of this thing is, is this debate over is China innovative? Um, so, quote at the top, Joe Biden is a, is a wonderful vice president and a, a very, very nice man. Um, he spoke at the Air Force graduation, and I don't know where he got this, this particular orientation, but he was trying to say America is the only place that produces innovation, and that he was naming to me one innovative project. Well, somebody could have jumped up and there's named a bunch of products and things, but the Air Force cadets didn't. There was debates in the Harvard Business Review. The Economist had a debate. And um, now just coming out in the, it will, it will come out in the winter, uh, uh, maybe, maybe the winter edition is out of the JEP, Journal of Economic uh, Perspectives, with a statement, Chinese firms have capacity and they should not be pessimistic. So there's, 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 there's two sides to this. So we're going to try to use the patents to, tr to determine to what extent is this patent explosion mean that China is becoming more innovative? And to what extent are these patents bogus statistics being driven by uh, governments suffering some money and people responding the way people respond? Uh, uh, by producing whatever, whatever it gets them more money. And this is the government. Yeah, that, and I, th there's a bunch of things here. There's R&D spending, high, high tech. This is all about the, the, the China goals for innovation in the, tw in the 2016 five-year plan. I put in, in, uh, in, uh, in, ca in capitals, the count of the PCT applications which, as you saw, were going up like mad. Uh, and they, they wanted these to be uh, uh, doubled over, this, over, over, the, over the, uh, the period. And patents per 10,000 people. Because China, while they have huge amounts of patents, China obviously has huge amounts of people. And um, China will not be high in almost any indicator of per capita. Um, but of course, if you got 1.3 billion people, they will be quite high in the aggregates. And there's an interesting sort of economics or, or sort of things about how, in what places do you use per capita measures, and in what places do you use aggregates? Uh, and, and, you'll, and you'll see how that plays plays um, out. So that's that's the what we're about. These are the questions that we thought were the most important ones to, to answer. Um, and I'll be talking about the first three, and then the others three. And you may have some other, other ones.
So, so we've got to judge this massive increase in patents. What's the quality of them? Do they make, do they say the same thing that a, a US patent would say? Or are they much, let's say, narrower? If I'm being paid and I can get my salary up by having a patent, and I can divide a patentable idea into four ideas, I'll have four patents, and they'll look great, um, et cetera. So we'll see whether that occurs. Uh, um, and so we have to compare the, um, the Chinese patents and, and um, the, has the patent quality fallen as we've had this explosion of patents, this huge, huge increase. That's one. Two is to what extent is this patent growth a catching up? In both patents and innovations, there's, 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 there's two, two aspects. Um, let me first go back to the innovation so we get the economic. You're, you, can have, you have an innovation that is new to the world. You're the first person ever to invent something. Um, and you pick out your, your new patentable, uh, your new invention as a patent, and you put it, no, no, it's, it's the European Patent Office. Okay. Somebody else now, uh, or the, the, sorry, I want to stick to the innovations. Now, somebody brings the, the, this product to the US. That's an innovation to the US, but not an innovation to the world. And then there's a thing, my company never produced this good. It's an innovation that is new to my company. We, 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 we break things this way. For patents, since it's national based, you can have the exactly, I could take a patent that you produced in some other country. If you didn't bring it out into my patent office, I can basically heist that patent and I, I'm the person who brings out the patent in, in, in this particular office. So the patent growth in, 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 in China could be inventions new to the world. It could be inventions new to China. And it could be that, that somebody goes overseas, sees an interesting product, and learns how to make it, and then says, oh, well, that company that made that did not bring out a patent in China. I can patent it in China and have, have, have the, the, the things. So there's, a, there's, there's that kind of uh, patent, and then there's frontier patents, which are new to the world. So well, that's a question of how we mean, what do you mean by innovativeness or patenting in that case? And then is, is how many patents really turn into innovations? The, the other two questions you should see in there, just why the patent explosion, we've not really studied that, and whether this explosion of patents means technology is being created that can help solve problems, and Ch China's problems, and we've not explored that. Okay, so that's our, our set of, 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 of questions and issues. Now, we've got to put together a data set to do this. And this is my coworker, Lin Tang Li. Uh, he, he spent a year and a half at Harvard <laughs> uh, uh, being extraordinary in, in producing data and, and, and uh, uh, doing stuff. Uh, so he goes to the, to, the, to the Chinese patent data. We pull it down all of the data. Uh, we have probably, I would say, probably the best data set in the world on the Chinese patents. Um, we, we did a Google patent search through web scraping, and that generated us things like how many citations there were to the patents. There's a bunch of stuff we got there. So I said we have here the references, which are backward citations, uh, forward citations, we, we know the technology classes of the patents. And, and it turns out that China uses an international classification. Patents are put into extremely narrow technical classes. So uh, we've been looking at patents connected to cell phones. Uh, and so you get, and then you can go within the patents for the cell phones into things connected to uh, the battery or uh, things connected 
to et cetera, et cetera. But you, you really can get some technological information from these, these classes, names, and then we matched all of these patents with the, the, the firms in the annual survey of industrial firms. That's so we, we that. For the US, we did not have to do too, as much because the NBR, Lee Fleming, who, when he was at Harvard, put together patent databases. And there's been a lot of work. So we, you don't have to clean data that, 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 that much. So Lin Tong says, he parsed it for the latest years using Python element tree package. You know, somebody who's. And then what we do and what we're going to use is we can identify the exact same patent in the SIPO database as in the USPTO. Because what a Chinese firm is going to do, the same as an American firm, Japanese firm, if you have a product you think, or you, excuse me, you have a patent that you think will lead to a product, you take out the patent every place. Because you don't want somebody going and saying, oh, you patented it in the US, and now I'm just going to take this patent in my name and patent it in, uh, uh, it wouldn't copy exactly the whole patent, but you you get the you 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 get some patent, put it into the the, the Japanese patent office, and then you have the rights uh, to produce in the Japanese uh, patent office. And it's quite typical nowadays, uh, typical um, for people to patent things in all three of the advanced country patent offices: the Europeans, the Japanese, and the Americans. And now we're we're seeing people are now patenting as well in China. So we have a matched data set. You can see how useful that will be in judging what does a Chinese patent look like compared to a typical US patent in the American office compared to a typical Chinese patent in the Chinese patent office. So it's kind of like a, it's giving us a, a way to establish an exchange rate using the, 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 this, this product. This, this. And then it's just a general discussion about citations to patents. When people write academic articles, citations are you know, quite critical. For nobody cites my article except my mother. Probably it's not that important an article. <laughs> uh, and if thousands of people cite my article, it's probably an important article. I say probably, you know, this, this, but it, it's, it, it's a reasonable indicator. For patents, it's, it's pretty much the same, but we can use the patents, you can use them in two ways. If you want to know how much knowledge went into my patent, you can look at the backward citations. How many other patents and other th pieces of information did I cite? We're going to limit ourselves here to the other patents. So patent scholars, patent research area, they use the citations of patent that either has cited many other patents, implying that it's making use of a broad base of knowledge, or in the future are cited by many other patents, are probably the more important and stronger patents than ones. If nobody ever cites your patent and you have no product produced, well, maybe it got you a couple hundred extra dollars from your university or the government gave your uh, a company a few, uh, some extra monies for meeting the goal of increasing patents, but it, but it has no e economic value. So that's, in the, that, that's uh, what, these, these, these things are widely done in the patent area. Okay, this, I'm not gonna tell you the details of this because I, I can't imagine you, you would find it exciting. But you, you, and I don't find it exciting. And my co-author, Lin Tong, he didn't find it exciting either. But you, you have to do this as accurately as is humanly possible. And so we were extraordinarily careful in, in matching the patents. And so we had a candidate list of 35,989, which looked like it was exactly the same product in the Chinese patent as in the US patent office. And then we boiled it down because there were some things different and just lists all, all the stuff 
to the uh, 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 um, uh, uh, to the to our our final certain to be the same patent is thirteen thousand eight hundred and fifteen. Are we were very are careful with doing doing this? That's first thing we looked at. Um, the, the the Chinese firms have an incentive to have report multiple patents. So what we said was, gee, well, we've now got these, these 13,815 patents. Now let's look at them in the US and what and, and China. And are is it the case that a a a CPO patent is matched to one USPTO patent, or does it match to two, three, or four or more US patents? The first line. And the whole story is, is basically, and this was quite surprising to us, given everyone was telling us, oh, they, they got this big incentive. They'll produce lots of patents. And the USPTO, they'll have very few. It's 83%. It's the exact same basic patent in both countries. So there's no effort by the Chinese firms in, to, to multiply, report multiple patents here. I mean, there's, there's some, but it's, it's, it's very modest. So the, the key thing is that that one one just says you really have got patents that are not different, not divided up. And indeed, the, it, it is true that for one CPO patent, if you look at the one two space, which is the, the 1,000, 1,050, okay, that's the time where we, we, we say there are two US patents that are patenting the same thing as the one Chinese patent. And that's more than the 330 in the other space, where we have one US patent and you see two CPO patents. But it's just basically the same patents. I mean, it's, 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 so that's our first sort of thing, saying, oh, well, we better be very careful about saying the, 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 the Chinese are producing all these excess patents because you can get some money from having the number of patents you, you, can, you, you can get. Okay. Um, so now I want to go, that's our data, and that's our, our way of dealing with some of the problems. So now I want to go what, what, what we found about the quality of the Chinese patents. And I'll give you a little charts for each of these statements. Um, we do find the Chinese patents are of lower quality than the American patents. Uh, on a whole bunch of criterion. And when they expanded the patents massively, the quality of the Chinese patents has fallen. So that's, uh, uh, but then the difference is, probably the best way to phrase this is, the difference in quality and the decline in quality of the Chinese patents is dwarfed by the huge increase. So if I raise something tenfold, and the quality goes down 5%, uh, that what's going to dominate the actual contribution of the patent to, to, as an indicator of knowledge is the tenfold increase, not the 5% uh, less cited or, or, or fewer claims or whatever it is. That's going to be the message. So I'll, I'll, now give you, I'll give you the charts for these four, four things in, in a moment. Lower claims. American patents make about 20 claims in, the, in the, the body, and Chinese patents in SIPO will make something five. But there is a big difference in numbers of claims being made. There are a whole lot of these low claim Chinese patents, but the Chinese are bringing lots of patents to the USPTO that are the same, basically, as, as, the, Amer as the American patents. So there are, there's a tale of Chinese patents that look like they're bogus. And one of my friends, she said, well, what you should do is take those low claim patents and see whether they are renewed. The idea being, I, if, if my patent is simply meant to get me some money from the government or, or, or from the university, uh, uh, um, then, okay, you, then you don't renew it because there's no product ever going to come out. You spend the one, the, one, the one payment to the patent. We haven't done that yet. Uh, um, then we found, and this is the, the 1.2, we found the CPO patents, they do 
make smaller number of citations, so they're lower on citations. But part of this is the American patent system has been a huge increase in, in, the, in, the, in the references to the American patent system. So one of the things we found by this comparative looking is there's something we, which nobody had previously remarked on about the American patent system. One reason the Americans are made, are, have, have more citations than the Chinese is, is that for, there's been a, a trend upward of American patents being widely cited without any change in our patent law, without any, you know, you read the literature and you say, well, somebody, maybe there's an important court case. And so they, the lawyers said, we've got to give more citations or else we'll lose something. We could find no, no, nothing, nothing there. And, um, the, and then I think the most important thing here is the, is the line four. We will look at Chinese patents, not just in the SIPO data, Chinese patent office. We'll look at the growth rate in the USPTO. We'll let the look at the growth rate. These are patents with the firm, the, is, is a Chinese firm, in the Japanese patent office. And we'll look at it in the European patent office. In every single patent office, the increase in Chinese patents is about the same fraction. It looks like this in those other offices. The other offices, they have to go through the European, the, the, the Japanese, the, the American. Those patents are going to be as good uh, as, the, as the other patents in those, in, in those offices. So I think we haven't got the evidence for this that down because it's in, the, uh, in the way we, we to prove to you. I think what's happened in China is there's an amazing growth of, of really valid, strong patents indicative of a change, but there's also been a huge growth of really shoddy patents. Uh, and um, that means the dispersion of patents in some ways got probably gotten wider. But we I think we haven't nailed that. Okay, now just gonna, this is just gonna be charts. It'll just show you. First is the, the, the claims. And what I do is give the claims for three kinds of patents in, 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 in each of the two offices. SIPO is the Chinese office, USPTO is the US one. We've got the claims of patents that are made by America, uh, US firms. That's the uh, red line. We've got the, uh, the patents that are only issued by SIPO. That's going to be the relatively low quality ones at the bottom. There are very few claims. That was I said, about five claims. So that, uh, if you took them, this is one of these things where the distributions are so um, dispersed, if I could phrase it right. Medians and means are going to give you different stories. And you really have to, 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 to study it. And we had not yet done that because we did not realize that that was going to be really fundamental in understanding what's going on. And the ones in the middle are, 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 the, are, are the patents that are joint between the SIPO and the um, US. That there the, are 13,000 guys who are in, in both data sets. The SIPO patents in the US PTO have fewer claims than the American patents. But they started off at about the same, and, when, and they're about, uh, we don't have the figures here, but they, they are about the same as the Japanese, the SIPO patents, excuse me, the Chinese patents look about the same as the Japanese and the uh, uh, European patents in the US uh, um, uh, 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 patent office. So there's, there's something about the American companies just adding more and more claims that no other, nobody's doing in other patent offices or in other countries. You look at the, the thing to the, to the right, and you, you see again, the claims for the Americans going up from 15 to, to, to 20 looks very similar to the, the, the American uh, 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 the US patents in the, the Chinese patent office. And then you see the no, no great uh, change in, in the Chinese patents in the USPTO. It's just sort of pretty flat. Now there's an in interesting bump. You look at about 2005, you see the claims in the US patents drop. And so, oh, gee, here, we're, here the Americans are suddenly putting in more and more claims, and suddenly it drops. They raise the amount 
that the Americans have to pay in the USPTO from $18 to $50. Seems like a peanut amount of money per claim. So every claim I make that the examiner has to examine, I have to pay some money as part of the patent fee. And lo and behold, when they, when they, when they, when they raised it, it's sort of like an extra tax on claims more than 20. Suddenly, the American patents drop below 20 in their claims. Uh, uh, to me, I, 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 just, I couldn't understand. You know, a patent attorney is expensive. A, uh, these are big companies, most of them. But they're responding to very small financial thing, substantially. So now the Americans are all around 20. They, they manage not to go over 20 where they pay an extra fee. So that, that, that's a sign of, of the way patents respond to economic in, incentives. So the American firms are making more claims than, than the Chinese for, firms. And if you use claims as an as a indicator of patents, the American patents are more, have more content in them. Then we go to the citations. Again, the US is at the top in the US PTO. These are backward citations. So that means how much patent content is going into your patent. But here's where, where you see, yeah, you know, the, 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 the Chinese patents and the patents of, of, of Germany and J Japan, they're all way below the Americans. So they're for reasons we do not, we have not investigated, we do not understand, American firms just make more uh, citations. And I don't know, we don't know why. That. There's, there's, you get no penalty. It doesn't cost you anything to cite other patents, and et cetera. And then we go over to the CEPO office, and there you find all the patents are pretty much the same in their um, uh, 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 citations. But look at the difference. 20 up to 40 citations in the US. The numbers over in, in, the, in, the, in the CEPO, uh, it, 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 it's the, uh, the numbers are one to four. These are dramatically different backwards. So I don't know why in the, in the Chinese patent office, you don't reference earlier patents. Oh, it's a, you know, what, we, we, as I say, quality or patenting norm, we, we don't know uh, uh, why that is. But again, if you were to take this as saying, um, gee, uh, uh, the, at least in the USPTO, the evidence is the Americans are, are citing more and therefore it would be higher quality patent, et cetera. Okay. Um, now it's. Um, these are the trends, and so these are based on regressions for each um, year. We have country dummies and to see what's going on with the uh, 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 citations. The Americans are zero. They're the admitted group. So everybody's below the Americans. Every country uh, um, cites less than the Americans. Uh, I say this is an American patent thing. And and, and the Chinese, as the patents were increasing in China, you see, it just takes a real dip. Remember, most of the big increase in patents occurred somewhere from around 2005, and so woof. But it doesn't look any different than the other countries. Uh, so there's a sense of which you, you would say, either the American patents just have more stuff in them, or we've got somewhere where the lawyers are maybe, I don't know, or, 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 or the patent examiners are putting more stuff in, but they don't do it for the, for the other countries in the USPTO. But we're going to live off this by saying, well, yes, let, let's, let's say this is declining Chinese quality of patents. So we have a, 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 that, that sort of a phenomenon. And then th this is the, the top of the patent world. This is the growth of patents in all the major patent uh, places. The rates, it says here, 27% in CEPO, 25%, 27%, fastest in the JPO. Every single patent office, China address patents are increasing massively. And, and there, there really is no difference 
um, a little bit, little bit with the Japanese, but they're basically they're all just incredible increases. So, so the, you cannot patent in all these countries at such an increasing rate unless you've got real, you know, you know potential innovations to your patents. So it does seem to be when the Chinese firms are going out and patenting internationally, there's all that increasing massively, which means they're going to be they're thinking of producing products overseas. Uh, and, and, and that's huge. And then there does seem to be this big increase of these low-level patents in the, in this, in the CIPO database. Um, that's, that, that's, so lower quality, declining quality. Mm, but we'll, we'll see what, what, how, how we, what we mean for this. So we turn these statistics into exchange rates. What we're trying to say is, gee, what, how should we take the China statistics? And they're not the same as a, you were using the US patent as, the, as a base. So what's, what's the exchange rate? We've got four different ways of doing it. And you just see somewhere, I, I would say, if you crudely average them, we, we've not done any uh, weighted averages on the basis of some A Chinese patent is worth probably something in the order of half of the US patent, 0.6, somewhere in there. And then it bounces around, and it goes up and down. So probably you'd want to discount the growth of the Chinese patents by more or less uh, 40%. But, uh, so if there are 10,000 patents, extra patents created, you would say, no, it's more like uh, 4,000, not discount, discount by 60% if we're doing 0.4. Um, but th that increase was like a straight line up. Discount it, and you still got more or less of a straight line going, going up. That's, so I think these patents, they are less valuable. Uh, they, they, they have less claims in them. Um, but they are, cannot be viewed as, quote, valueless. And this all being a, 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 a sham exercise in response to incentives. Any comments, questions? Any, anyone here have a Chinese patent? Yes, ma'am. Oh, oh, yeah, oh, thank you so much. Yeah, I should have said, these are only invention patents. My, my fault. Yes. Right. That, that's great. That, 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 that's really useful and helpful for what we're doing. We have the suspicion that you first do patents in China and then do them overseas. And, and that's why you see the exact same patent when it goes to the USPTO. It looks identical to the CIPO patent. But we really don't, don't have the, what's the correct word, the, the dynamics and the timing down. All we know is these two patents look identical. Um, and the notion that you're using this for protection for prototypes is, 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 is also interesting. What we haven't done, we, we haven't like got a survey of a lot of companies that are making patents and saying, what, you know, what, how did you do this? What were your decisions? The money be, m mattering? Because if the, if the what was it, $32 or 
for the U.S. Cause this drip of drop of claims. Small amounts of money can be can really be influential in people's patenting decisions, um, etc. Et, et, et um, and we don't do it, which is what implicit in your question is. You really what you really want to do is follow the patent to an invent to an actual marketable and product. And the, the patents of the six doesn't do this uh, at all. So you, you have to do that separately in some fashion. The only place that we're now trying to do that is with cell phones, because it's a pretty well-structured uh, mar market. And, we're, we, we, and, and you can find out the every cell phone has a model on Amazon. <laughs> and we've got the, the equivalent models in China. And so you can actually look at this product um, did this, and it cites the has these patents as part of it. But yeah, that that that, that that's for, that's for very uh, very helpful. Uh, I think that's good. Good. Right, but no, the question, but you, did you just say the question being, are they commercialized or not, is, is, is it critical, yeah. That's right. No, no, no for, for fair comment. That's what the entire patent literature does, because that's the only data that exists. You have to do another step, which is go to the actual inno innovation. Now, what, there is some data. We just haven't tapped, tapped into this, both in the Chinese and in the American uh, uh, patent systems, about renewing. So I was thinking of a low-level patent is something that I put in for the year, and then maybe I put it in trying to make a product or something, or maybe I did it because I'm going to get a reward or tax something from the government for, for putting in patents, and then I don't renew it the next year. That's a sign that I don't think it has any commercial value. And we have not brought the renewal statistics together with this, which, which would help define low-value patents. Um, and, and, and you might think, I don't mean that bogus in a bad, in a, but you know, it's a patent that I'm, I, I either never intended to make a product from, um, or uh, it's something that I, you say, I, I, I thought maybe I can, and in a year I decided, no, I don't see a product. There's another aspect with the patents which, is, which, which you, you, you could, could criticize low level. I put out my patent, and, it re and I think I can make a, a, a good product with it. But someone else patents something that is better than mine. And my patent just dies. I, I don't make a new, because I just cannot compete with, you, with you, your, your company and your product. And so we don't have things analyzing, does a new patent kill some previous patents? And it, it must, and you know, kill in the sense of, uh, 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 of, well, that's the, my thing was fine, but it was fine last year, and the technology and whatever it is moved on, and so my patent becomes useless, and I don't renew it. That's, uh, but for, you know, for, for your comments, good. Yeah, that's that's, that's fine. Okay, so that's that's our, our that's our what we're doing in the, in the, in the measures, and, and we, we we obviously leave something out. Here is just to show you what we saw a minute ago with all the patent offices, the incredible increase of Chinese patents in the U.S. PTO, which is our matched our group. So we have the dated the years these patents came out, 2000, 2005. It's just like no. Chinese patents are, are, are negligible in the U.S. Patent Office. Firms don't think they have enough to either meet the U.S. criterion or they don't think they're ever going to be producing the product 
maybe because it's an imitation item and there's something else that you rest. And it just ships up for 2015. Um, China in 2015 was the fifth major source of patents in the foreign source in the US Patent Office. Uh, so you, you know, Japan has, is going to have more patents. Uh, Germany has more patents uh, than, than China in the US Patent Office. Uh, uh, um, the, the Brits will have more. And I'm not sure who the fourth is, is the Canadians or the French, uh, but it'll all be developed advanced countries. So China now is in the pack of advanced, it's, 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 in, the, it's in the same area as these other countries. And my guess would be 2017, the Chinese patents, will, maybe the China will go to fourth or third. Uh, they're closing in to where they are as active in the US patent office as other advanced countries. If you did it per capita, well, the China would not look so good, obviously. But that's where the, the, the interesting thing of patents in a, it coming at a society of 1.3 billion people may not have that many patents per person, but multiplied by 1.3 billion, that's a lot more than Canada would have, which may be more quote, innovative per, per capita because it's wealthier and so, so on. Okay. And the, during this period of incredible increase in the, in the, in, 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 in the, um, uh, um, in, in the, in the forward citations, or excuse me, the increase in the patents, we've seen the forward citations of the Chinese patents go down. So as China has had more and more patents in the US PTO and that huge rise, there's been a drop in their, uh, in, the, in, the, in, in the citations. To us, that's a sign of, yeah, the first products you will bring out in a foreign country will be really good ones. Then you start bringing out more and more. So it's, 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 a, it's a, a question of what's on the margin. And then, this is the quantity overwhelming the quality. These are the fractions of citations to China patents in the, um, in the, in the um, left over here. Oops. So, so we take all the Chinese patents and we say, we're not asking citations per patent. We're just getting all of the citations. China's zooming up. And yet the curve here zooms up, um, you know, as well. We take account of do Chinese patents citing only citing other Chinese patents. So we have some, some reductions and so on. But the key thing is that, remember the curve, first curve, it was zooming up. The same thing is occurring in the patents. There's a zooming up of the, of the China's all the citations to patents in the U.S. Patent Office at the bottom, and on the top is the citations to Chinese patents with some deductions for self-citations, this company doing itself, with, self, with, with some for, the, for, the, for taking account of the country and so on. So the quantity growth is overwhelming the quality decline. So that the, yeah, that's... And to the right side, we, we did the, 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 the things for particular uh, um, uh, uh, cohorts, and we broke some things by, uh, 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 by whether the citations were by examiners and so on. The same thing. The share of Chinese patents are going up because the quantity of patents dominates declines in the average quality of, of the patents. That's, and that's our, our, our message. We then said, gee, is China patents coming in the same technical classes as the Americans? The government's pushing for, you know, move up the, 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 the chain of production. So we took all these extremely detailed technology codes. We did a match between them. 
So there's the, the CPO has 70,000 codes, the USP uh, PTO has 150,000. So these are extremely narrow technology classes. So it would be, you know, it would be something like glass for a uh, uh, um, hard glass for, for a small object like a cell phone. It would be uh, not batteries. It would be uh, you know battery for a watch. They're incredibly detailed. And so we just said, okay, how many patents does China have in each of these classes? Um, in 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 the match, it's a matching of the of the of the two codes. And then how many does the U.S. have? And then we're doing a cosine. You know, these are these are a vector. We're saying, are they getting closer together or further apart? I, I thought it very possible that China would be getting further apart from the U.S., that there would be an extremely large number of patents in the uh, manufacturing processes that are done by low-wage workers. That you would see a lot of shoe patents in China uh, and, and not so many of, um, of uh, high-tech things. What you see is that, in fact, these the code and then there's a, the, the 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 law. There's just a, a, a simple little like regression line. So it's the cosine uh, difference is in fact de declining. When one means that they're they're they're, they're the same, that, that the two vectors are getting closer together right, rather than further apart, and. That's true in the uh, USPTO, and it's true much less so if we take the average Chinese patent in SIPO. So you can imagine this. What's going on is the Chinese patents that the companies are, are putting in the USPTO are very close and getting closer to the, the same technologies that the Americans are patenting in. In the SIPO, it's further apart. And it's gotten closer, but not so much closer. Uh, it's a slower convergence. But there, China is moving into the same technology space as the advanced countries. And when they patent an advanced country, they're patenting in those advanced country uh, technology uh, classes, more, more so than in the past. And uh, OK. Now, what about the economic innovations associated with this? And I'm going to show you that the, if we take a Gorilla Keys style measure of patent capital and put it into an economic production function, the Chinese patents are associated with greater production by the company. And the coefficients are about the same as you get for the European countries and for the Americans in the same regressions. China doesn't look different. So you'd say, well, whoa, maybe the Chinese patents aren't all that, all, all, you know, all that lower quality. But, it, but again, I'll show you, it's the high quality patents that are the ones that are carrying the weight. And there's this tale of really useless, or, or I, be careful, you'll correct me again. But, but patents that don't seem to be so useful. You, you, but you'll see the evidence in a second. These are just the regressions. So the patent stock is, is the key variable. So what they do in the patent literature, they take the patents of a given year, and then they say, we're going to treat it like a stock of capital. It's a stock of knowledge. So we'll take the patents of um, 2000, and we will then say, OK, patents of 2000, and we'll add together the patents of 1999 discounted. Say, so you treat the patents as investment flow, and you form a capital stock. And that's what, what people do. So we just say, well, okay, we'll do, we'll do this as well. So we have all these fixed effects, blah, blah, blah. And the key thing to, 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 uh, we're to focus on is just what's the effect on output? We find a positive effect. Companies that do more have more, cap, more patents in China have greater productivity or greater output. This is output in a production function with, at the bottom it says, we have physical capital, employment, materials, we have a lot of other things. So this is the 
sort of total factor productivity in the way you might think ab about it. And, and that's about the same coefficient you, you get in the US and in Europe. Then we asked about profit margin and we said employment growth. So we see, then we, we, when we look at the firm fixed effect, that means we're looking at exactly the same firm and we're saying when it increases its stock of capital, what do you see for the uh, uh, output? Well, the output is much less than when you're comparing across, company, across the firms. And that's quite typical with a fixed effect analysis. And we're seeing nothing for the uh, uh, employment growth and, and margins. But the key thing is the output remains um, significant in, in that, cal in that uh, 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 calculation. And so the, the Chinese patents are clearly not useless from this kind of exercise. They are indeed associated. A company that produces more patents is producing more goods. And if the same company increases its patents, it is also increasing its production. And the numbers are no, this is just what you would get. If, if I put here the uh, European, there's a European study by uh, Nick Bloom and John Van Rienen, I could have put their regressions here. You couldn't tell the difference. No, you, you wouldn't know which was China, which was the, was this, and the same thing with the, the US. So, so they, they're, they are showing up in actual improved productivity. So that's better. Now, we then said, well, gee, we have this quality patents and we have the low quality patents. And we're going to now break the patents up into two parts. Those in which we say they're high quality. They've got some citations. And those that basically get no citations. And and this is, again, this reflects what people do in this patent literature uh, in different ways. And lo and behold, high quality patents much bigger on output, they're on margin, they're on employment growth. And again, when you do the fixed effects, they're also, that's what matters. The low quality patents, when you do the fixed effects, they disappear completely. So it, it, it's that this high quality set of patents that China is producing, which, which are the ones that are going to be in the USPTO, and presumably in the JPO and, 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 the, and the European patents, that's where you get uh, uh, um, the, a, a, um, that's where you get the, 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 the big, the, the, the big uh, e e e effects. Uh, oops, it's this way. OK, so this, I'm going to just conclude now what we, what we, we said. The first, and to me, the most important thing is that the magnitude of this incredible explosion is so great that it dwarfs lower quality and declining quality things, so that China's share of world patent citations and of claims has risen. Boom. Uh, and that's, that's being big. If you're really big and you increase things, you become more and more important in, 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 in this world. Um, production thing, they, they show the same results as other countries, so that says they're good, and they're closing in, 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 in technology space. So this, the China explosion in patents, it's got some, you know, it's exaggerated in some dimensions, but it is real, it is not a, um, uh, something made up by by the government or saying we got to have a plan and we're going to everybody better start producing more patents um there is a high quality part and that's what matters and they're doing that um and then i there's some discussion about of things we really um haven't haven't looked at yet we would like to know how many patents are in places where you would clean for let's say air filtration units or it could be water uh, pollution things. How many inventions are coming out in places where, where China has social problems, etc.? Et um, we know there are a lot of things in the in the cell phone business, and the cell phone is very successful. But that's not, that's not a problem area that you would worry about people, etc. That's the. What's all this? I don't know. Here's, oh, I just said. Oh, I just I put something here about we can do other things. For the, data, and you can may think of things. We have this very nice database now. That's, that's it. Oh, there's an appendix. I'm not going to give you the appendix. Thank you, Richard.
So I think um, you know, Richard's really getting to the heart of the matter in that there has been enormous debate about the true quality of Chinese patents, and I think this obviously is shedding uh, very useful uh, insights into how to think about that growth. Uh, let me invite uh, questions from the audience. There are any? Yes, right here. Can you just uh, maybe introduce yourself and ask your question and try to keep the questions brief? Okay, thank you so much, Professor. Uh, thank you for your uh, interesting speech, and I have one question because I'm quite confused about the time gap between uh, the, uh, the pattern that you invented and uh, um, that the time you apply for the patent. Because uh, I noticed that the, the explosion began from maybe 2000 and uh, 1, 2005. And that is just uh, the time that China joined WTO, right? And I think maybe there could be some explanation like uh, the explosion of the uh, patent uh, attorney and uh, the media uh, education, such kind of thing that will increase the awareness of the public to apply for the patent, but not not just the increase of the you know in invention. So I think that may, might be the reason. Okay, that's a good point. And yes, you're you're correct with your with your statement. The patents start zooming up after the WTO. And uh, it may very well not be that inventions increased. It's just that patents increased. Um, that it's continued to increase and at, at, at increasingly uh, huge rates. You would you might we might say, gee, it starts up after the WTO, but it's still going from. 2010 to 2015 at an incredible rate, uh, that has to be more invention rather than, I mean, you, you, it, 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 it phrase your thing in a different way because it's, it's, it, it's, 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 when China does things that are different from the world, or, do, or presents them in a different way, and then it shifts to presenting them in the way the world is, it looks gigantic because China wasn't there. In the, so in the patent world, China did not exist. You say, well, the event was. You find the same thing in the uh, scientific literature world. China has its own uh, uh, you know, Chinese language science journals, and lots of papers there. All of a sudden, China's papers in the, in the English language international journals, 20% of the journal of the papers now have Chinese addresses on them. It was zero, if you go back. It, and it, and it, it's, it's wrong to say that China was doing no research before, because it wasn't showing up in this indicator. Uh, and you're correct for what you say about, the, uh, uh, about this as well. But the, the rate of increase has continued. So there's probably a first burst when China was, the, whatever inventions were being done and they weren't being patented. And they get to where they are patented, but it keeps going. And, and it's, it's a good point. And it's one we'll mention. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you see, your suggestion is the following. It is we should blow up, in some sense, if we really want to measure the patents as a real and contributor to inventions, we would have to do some adjustment for the early years. Or we could say arbitrary, semi-arbitrarily, maybe could do some statistical econometric things. We'll say we're going to drop the, the early immediate response of patents. And that is a, a very good idea. And we'll, do, we'll, we'll, we'll do that just to make sure that it's not this uh, pho pho phony. It's, it's a genuine increase in patents, but it's a phony increase in inventions because China was doing inventions when they when, when they were not patenting. Uh, 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 that, 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 that's good. Put that down here, too. Thanks. Thank you, Professor, for your wonderful speech. Uh, I was wondering that um, how has a catch-up phenomenon uh, contributed to a developing economy's transition to um, knowledge-based economy? Uh, would you say it would be interesting to compare China to a comparatively newer uh, uh, sorry, um, knowledge economy like Japan. 
has Japan experienced the similar trajectory, uh, namely explosion in co- of quantity and decline of quality? Yes. Uh, uh, no. The answer is yes, it would be good to do. We did not do that. The country I know very well is, is Korea. And you will see something very similar in Korea. I, I thought, that, just because I don't know that much about Japan maybe, uh, is that China is following a development trajectory that has some similarities to Korea. Um, in the scientific literature, in, in patents, you saw Korea with its much smaller population, was still zooming up there, et cetera. Um, I don't know how much intervention the uh, Japanese government played in those early periods, probably did, but I do know the Korean government played a big role in their movement, and China's government clearly plays a big role in this um, upward movement. Mm. So we have, if anyone w- wants to work with us who knows the Japanese patent data and things, that would be great, because. You obviously can do the kinds of things we've done here with China and the U.S. You could add in Japan as, as, as well and then check on, on the thing. There's also been, uh, you think of the other countries, that, uh, Germany I'm thinking about in particular, which were destroyed in the World War II and they had no education system afterwards because it was a bombed out you know, disaster. Um, and they have come back very strongly in patents. Uh, and so it, Japan may not be a very fine comparison, but so too might some of the European countries that, that, that also made a, this, this rapid recovery. And it would be interesting to see what policies, et, et cetera. But, but China has the one distinct thing that is, makes it incredibly different from Japan, from Korea. China has this huge rural population. All of these countries have developed very, very rapidly without, the rural populations are small. And, Amer- and, and, and that makes China very, very unique. And it might be interesting to, to look at the addresses on the Chinese patents. I assume, I may be wrong, that almost all of them are from urban areas, they're from big firms, so half of your population, roughly speaking, is not contributing to this because their education is not so good. The opportunities are not so good. And, and um, it's the urban China that's, that this is reflecting. But, so if, uh, if patents affect productivity significantly and in similar magnitude to the US and Europe, then with this explosion, shouldn't we have seen extremely rapid growth <laughs> In China, I don't think that's what we actually see. We see a slowdown in this most right. period. So I'm just curious about how to think about that. Oh, well, you raised a really big issue because uh, we, the patents have been growing in all the countries, and the, the growth has been slowing in all countries. We st- we have positive coefficients in all countries, and um, what the Chinese patent might, might be picking up is this. this you compared it to the U.S., it'd be 7% growth versus 2% growth right now, or it might have been 9% versus whatever it would have been before for the Americans. So the patents are telling you something about the level, but they are not capturing whatever the slowdown in growth in all the countries is. And one of the things you, you could, I'm not a great huge fan of this production function methodology. It's a little too aggregate and, and et cetera. Uh, but it, it obviously is you know, uh, possible that you, know, we're, we, you push up the margin first and you would get in the production functions, if you followed her suggestion of doing, um, breaking the, the by years maybe in some fashion, you would then see, oh, there's a declining coefficient because right. as, we, as we get closer to this frontier, and, chi- and it would show up in China, get closer to the frontier, there's no, it's not so easy to get free, uh, you know, 
you, you, you can't tap into old other people's technologies the way you once um, could. Right, the identification could be coming from the period or where it was at a lower base. And really That's right. Not that, is, that is correct. We're, we're, we're going to check that. Yeah, because yeah. that, was, that was the underlying her thing, and that's, that's got to be checked. But you might say, maybe in a more sophisticated model, why should the same production function be fitting all, all over all these years? And th there you could be saying, we would expect as the capital, as the, as the patent stock gets bigger and bigger, um, the marginal, you got the, the, the top inventions come first, then there are more marginal inventions, and that, it, it, there's a lot of work to be done in that space, I think, in that hypothesis. Other questions or comments? Okay, if not, then uh, let's all thank Richard again for a very interesting talk.